And so I decided, you know, I'm gonna become a runner. Um, I know I lost my diamond ring running that one time, but maybe it was a fluke. I'm gonna take on a marathon. I'm going from nothing to everything. This is the only natural way. Um, I had some adrenaline coursing through me after that exchange. Um, so I decided I'm ready to become athletic. <laughs> Because that's the fix, right? You, you lace up the Nikes, you get that watch that tells you stuff, and you apparently drink more water, which it's not gonna happen. How many of you? It's like every single year I'm like, oh, and this is the year I drink more water. It's not, not probably not, you know? Um, but I'm, I'm like, no, I, I'll do all of that. I'm gonna punish my body into submission, back into place. But thank God, I looked up how to correct diastasis recti and the answer was horrible. <laughs> Do you know that if you run with this condition, it bulges more? <laughs> really glad I looked that up before I started my career as a marathon runner. Um, <laughs> and I would just like to say, I've come a long way. I am actually really grateful for, for this. Um, again, because it just marked the most beautiful little one that I have and what, what a worthy process. So I just, I'm, I'm interjecting because I'm, this is mostly tongue in cheek, mostly. Um, you can hear I'm torn. Um, so I read, how do you correct diastasis recti? It's not my impulse, which is get up, run, do the stuff, perform. Ah, uh, somebody's like, wait a second. We're going back into something, we are. Here's how you correct it. Breathing. Posture. How you carry yourself. It's the changing of the mind where every action, everything you go about your day doing has to be done through the lens of correction, proper alignment, slow fixes, all invisible. Not what I like. And doing otherwise can make it worse. Literally, it's addressing the core of the issue. Now, I've heard that before. I've heard that other times I've wanted to just set off running instead. Take matters into my own hands, fix this fast. It's kind of my signature move. <laughs> On to the next thing, make it better. That was unfortunate, let's, let's do something different. Let's make it different. Work harder. And I wanna propose there's a different way, one that will set us up for new seasons and chapters that the Lord's inviting us into. As I was preparing for today, right away in my mind, this book um, kind of popped in there. It's called Sit, Walk, Stand by Watchman Nee. Anybody? It's amazing. It's this small little book. I highly recommend reading it. It's just a, it's a study on the book of Ephesians. And what he does is he breaks down the, the first, um, kind of in thirds loosely, but the, the first part of it is sitting. We, we begin every new spiritual endeavor, not only salvation, but every new chapter. How many of you feel a new season in front of you? We revisit this process over and over. We begin not with running, not with standing, not with walking. We begin by sitting, seated in heavenly places with Jesus, our resting heart rate, who we are in him before we do anything. Remembering what his blood accomplished that nothing else ever could. We begin in the humble stance of sitting and receiving. I wanna propose that whatever the next season and chapter that we can feel in the air is, whether you feel a down and out, like I can't get myself up if I tried, maybe you're qualified there. Maybe you should be sitting anyway. Maybe that's how we begin. And if you feel like you're up and moving, maybe we get to pause and rest all over again, sit back into who is Jesus Christ and what has he accomplished for me before I go run and try to make it happen. Let's remember what he's done. We are seated in Christ in heavenly places, sitting. We walk out godliness to the praise of his glory, walk and we stand firm against the enemy's schemes, powerful and effective in the kingdom. But it all starts with sitting. You know what I love? Anyone can sit. 
It's not the elite. Doesn't matter what your childhood's like. Doesn't matter what your capabilities feel like at the moment. Anyone can start. I wanna take it one further. I love the idea of beginning with sitting. But I read, I open up, and in the first story, we have God, maker God, creator God, who's spinning landscapes, forming the heavens, hanging stars, and he rested on day seven. What day does Adam come on the scene? Is he there for all the work? Was it accomplished when he showed up? Did he Sabbath first? Was God intentional about that? Whoo, this is good news. I hope this feels, I feel like, I feel the good news of the gospel in the room. <sighs> he begins all of humanity on a Sabbath, starting resting in what he had already done. Then we have the first covenant with God, right? You see these covenants, these marking moments through the Bible. And the first time that God ever established the idea of, I wanna make covenant with man, this is insane. This is insane what he's offering, right? Because covenant is this. It's saying everything that's mine, we're gonna get into a legal binding arrangement where everything that's mine is yours and everything that's yours is mine. How many of you know when the God of the universe who hung the heavens, formed those landscapes, comes to you and says, I would like to give everything that's mine to you and I'll take everything that's yours. You say, sir, yes, sir. <laughs> Right, we're women, we want a good bargain. There is no bargain like this. <laughs> yes, okay, whatever it takes. I will enter into this with you. And God extends covenant to man, Abraham, for the first time. So Abraham says, yes, of course, let's do this. And what happens? So this is graphic, and I just wanna say, sometimes we think the Bible's boring. The Bible's not boring you're boring, we're boring, I'm boring. Um, we need to learn how to find the stories. Again, the sights, the smells, the sounds of scripture, applying our imagination, right? So this gets graphic, but that's the good stuff. So you have Abraham and God, and they're gonna establish covenant together. This is outrageous. And they bring a cow out, which is customary. And they split this cow in two, and they lay it out, and they say, if I break my terms of this agreement, May whatever happened to this cow happen to me if I break my side, binding legal to death. And you have God says, I'll go first. And he begins to walk this covenant path, this like figure eight infinity sign around this cow. And Abraham watches. And then it's Abraham's turn. And what happens? God puts him into a deep sleep. He lays him down. He Sabbaths him. He rests him. And as he's there, God walks that covenant path for him, saying, may it be to my body, broken for you so that everything that's mine can be yours and everything that's yours can be mine while he rests, fully accomplished by the Father. We begin by resting. On to the New Testament. What's first? We must die to sin. The old man must be buried. We must go underground. All to rise because Jesus himself rose. We lean back in what he's done. The old gone and the new comes. But it, it comes with the, re the surrender, the laying back everything we've been to take on everything that he is. It begins with rest, humble surrender, confession. You are my Lord. There's this theological distinction that's very nerdy and very good. In Galatians, they talk about this phrase that there's faith in Jesus, which we, we always talk about, and that is our faith is such a key role, right, in our walk with God, our faith in Jesus. My, my, I believe my faith in Jesus. But there's another reading of this text that's the faith of Jesus in his Father. 
that Jesus knew who his father was. And he knew, I'm gonna go underground and it's not up to me to raise myself. I don't know, I don't know what this is gonna look like. I don't know how long this is, but I trust my father and my faith in the father is gonna lead me all the way down. And I know he'll raise me in due time. I know he'll resurrect me. The faith of the son is our faith. So maybe it doesn't even rest on my good faith. And it's by this that we can say, I believe, help my unbelief. So no matter where you are today, whether you feel like you're on your feet or on the ground, in great faith, great belief, or help my unbelief, you are qualified there. He knows how to come all the way to you. If Jesus could trust God to raise him up in just the right time, could we trust him for the same? Could his timing be better? And if there's an appointed moment for me to wait and rest and not get up and walk yet, not stand, not run, those times will come. Can I be obedient and can I see the worthiness of this first moment, the intimacy of, All that I have is yours and all that you have is mine. Relearning all over again who I am in my resting heart rate. Trusting that the Father still knows how to raise us up. Is still faithful to resurrect because he will. This all matters because now we are in Christ. Don't work for what you already are. Don't strive for what's already been given. Rest back into the confidence of who he is and watch that lift you back up again. That's the gospel. I don't know what to tell you. We die and we're risen, not by our own might, not by our power, but by the spirit of God, right? So no matter where you are, we simultaneously, we sit in who he is and who we are in him. We walk out this godliness and we stand against the schemes of the enemy. We doing good? I know this is a little a little conceptual for a second. So whether you feel like you're nursing an injury of the soul, you're in a hidden season where it feels like no matter how hard you try to get up, you're being asked to stay down. In a cave with the Lord, you feel like you're down and out, like you don't have it in you to fight or feel like walking or standing. Know your bedrock. He's all the same under your feet. It's in the resting in who he is and what he has done. And we never graduate from this. This is our everything. I think it's why we revisit it with every new chapter. We can't graduate from the basics. They are everything. Who he is and who we are in him. This is everything. May we never grow too mature for it. May we never seek for the goosebumps of a new idea to replace the reality, the truth of the gospel of what Jesus accomplished for us. I'll never get past it. It's unsearchable. 